21st placed Queen's Park Rangers head to league leaders Leicester City this weekend and the Foxes come into this one on the back of a 1-0 win over Bournemouth in the fifth round of the FA Cup on Tuesday night. But after losing back-to-back -back matches in the Championship for the second time this season, will they be able to keep their hands on the league title as we approach the final run-in of the season or could they slip from their perch? Equally, will QPR, fresh out of the relegation zone after a 2-1 win at home to Rotherham last weekend, remain safe after this weekend's results? I'm Hoopser, I make QPR previews and post-match reactions before and after every fixture, so let's discuss all of this and what to expect from the team that has been top since the 23rd of September 2023. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe as well. For large parts of this season, Leicester City have been in cruise control. A squad sprinkled with Premier League quality and some exciting new recruits has seen them score the most goals in the league and boast the second best defence. Their 2-1 win away at Loftus Road back in October was a largely dominant affair with Leicester having 80% of the ball. Sprinkling an Andre Dezel red card, a back line that consisted of Sam Field at centre-back and Ozzy Kukai at right-back, and Harry Winks' ninth career goal at the age of 28, and the away side had more than enough to comfortably seal the win. That was their ninth win in a row at the time and their 13th from 14. And more notably for the R's, it was Gareth Ainsworth's final match in charge. 20 matches on under Marty Sifuentes and this is now a very different QPR side. For the first time since late September, QPR sit outside of the relegation zone. And on the back of our best league form since Michael Beale's departure, you really couldn't hope for a better time to face the league leaders on paper. But the strength of their squad will be a true test of how far this QPR team has come. Now interestingly, the two matches that followed Leicester's victory at Loftus Road were their first back-to-back -back losses of the season. Firstly, a 1-0 home loss to promotion rivals Leeds United, and then a 1-0 loss away at Middlesbrough the following weekend. They responded very well to that minor blip losing just one of their next 16 league matches and retaining first place throughout that period. But in a bizarre symmetry, their latest two league results, the second time they've posted back-to-back -back losses in this campaign, have come at the hands of the same two teams. Firstly, a 2-1 home loss to mid-table Middlesbrough, and most recently, a 3-1 away loss at Leeds United last Friday. The Leeds away match played out exactly like a Premier League match in waiting, with the two sides going at each other frantically with pace and trickery and triangle passing in a bid to unlock one another. But painfully for Leicester, after leading the game 1-0 for 80 minutes, and with several missed sitters by the likes of Mavdidi and Patson Daka, they would go on to concede three goals in 14 minutes at the end of the match. And after the full weekend of results, the gap from first to third place has been cut to just six points. Now the missed sitters are especially important here because for all of the Premier League quality that they have in that squad, the £44 million spent in the summer, 37-year-old Jamie Vardy remains their most prolific striker and is their joint top scorer on 10 goals. And that's despite having missed a third of the campaign for injury. He'd scored four in four before the Leeds match before missing both that fixture and Bournemouth with a muscle injury. And he looks likely to be sidelined for QPR's visit as well. That's obviously not to say that they can't score without him. They do have the league's best record for goals and there has been no shortage without him. Dewsbury Hall and Mavdidi sit alongside him on 10 goals and Patson Daka, for as toothless as he seems to be, sits closely behind on seven. Equally, winger Fatawu showed the damage he can do on the wing with an excellent goal against Bournemouth in the FA Cup on Tuesday night. The point is, there does seem to be a toothlessness up front without Vardy, and it's the mental implications of this Leeds loss that I'm interested in. Their inability to see out the game against Leeds United seems significant to me, not only because it's cut that gap at the top to just six points, but also because they'll be facing much stronger sides in the Premier League next season. It's also worth noting that all of their six losses this season have come against promotion-seeking sides. And as I say, with that gap between first and third now cut to just six points, Leeds United will surely be fancying themselves for a last ditch attempt to steal the title from them. And Leicester City fans must surely be looking over their shoulders for the first time in a long while with just 12 matches left to go. Now, Championship League winners don't tend to slip up often in this kind of position. The last three Championship seasons have seen Burnley, Fulham and Norwich all comfortably cruise to the title 
after spending a prolonged period at the top without faltering. And Lister have done the same so far since going top. However, it's not to say that it never happens. In fact, the last time it happened was the 2019-20 season when West Brom were top of the league with just eight games to go until none other than Leeds United stole that title from them. And this is all without mentioning the fact that Ipswich Town are also six points behind, only behind Leeds United on goal difference. Would it matter if Leicester dropped first place? Well, probably not. Their objective, of course, is to go straight back up to the Premier League at the first time of asking and they probably would still be most likely to claim second place over Ipswich Town. But as I say, the reason I find this interesting is because of the context that it has going into this tie against QPR. You have to wonder what kind of mindset the players will be in after those back-to-back -back losses, and what kind of pressure that is putting on the squad ahead of this final run. Before they'd even had this double loss, some Leicester City fans had already voiced discontent at the possession-based style of play that Maresca is playing, to the point that he threatened to leave the league leaders last month. You have to wonder how the fans would react if they somehow didn't produce a result against a bottom table side this weekend. Now, even with some squad rotation, they did bounce back quite comfortably against Bournemouth in the FA Cup on Tuesday night. So in that sense, they have demonstrated that they can go toe to toe with a top division side. But the lack of that prolific striker was still felt. It still went to extra time, nil-nil. And you only have to look at the likes of Southampton, who after going 25 matches in the league unbeaten, have now lost three of their last four games. It can be very hard to get going again once that run is halted. That's why this is going to be a big mental test for the home side, despite where QPR sit in the table. Plugging this blip, just like they did with their first back-to-back -back losses back in November, will be incredibly important this weekend, especially with Leeds United facing Huddersfield at lunchtime on Saturday. So, that means depending on the way you look at it, this is either perfect timing for QPR to face a potentially nervous Leicester City, or probably much more likely, it puts QPR firmly in the firing line of a Leicester City thrashing, with the home side hellbent on converting some of those chances that just wouldn't go in against Leeds last Friday. They did, after all, hit Stoke City, who are level on points with QPR and with a very similar goal difference, 5-0 just one month ago. In fact, of every team they've faced from 14th downwards so far this season, they've dropped points just once, which was a one-all draw to Sheffield Wednesday. So although they might be at threat of losing their league title, it's probably unlikely to be caused in part by QPR, right? My head naturally thinks that they will, of course, still have too much firepower for QPR, despite their improvement. They have quality all over the pitch. The important thing here is not taking too much of a beating and halting some of that momentum that we've created with the back-to-back -back wins against Bristol City and Rotherham United. Even if we slip back into the relegation zone as a result of a loss to Leicester City, this is not the result that QPR will be judged on this month. We just need to make sure that we can keep some of our momentum going into West Brom on Wednesday and keep that positive energy going. But then again, maybe the fact that QPR aren't expected to win at the King Power Stadium will do them a favour. They are the underdog here and with no pressure or expectation going into this one, that could do them a lot of good. And I'd like to think that without Vardy, if we can keep it tight and keep their wingers quiet, this is a team that we could maybe pull off a shock result against. We know we play better against the attacking sides and unlike the last time we played Leicester, we actually have a football manager with a football brain now whose wits seem to flourish against the better sides in the division. With the exception of West Brom away, all of our results against the top six sides so far have seen pretty narrow scorelines, and those were all without our January reinforcements. Colback will be missed in the middle with his suspension, but a galvanised Samfield should do the trick in his place. Otherwise, Marty has a pretty fit squad to pick from, so get that selection right, don't concede too early, and who knows what could happen. So on that basis, I'm gonna go for a two or draw. Thank you so much for watching. Please do let me know your own predictions of delusion in the comments below. And if you have enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And I'll see you next time for my match reaction. Cheers.